I'm, well today I'm sorting out one of these planters at the front of my house. I've got one here and one here and you can see they're a bit old and not very attractive. Um, this is Osteospermum and it is flowering so I'm kind of leaving these buds but later in the year I'll cut it right back to down here. The wallflowers are preparing to come out as you can see. Um, and actually down here you can see that some have seeded and sown themselves from last year so this is a baby wallflower. But what I'm actually doing here they're getting these tulips in. I'm so I'm putting one set of tulips in each 24, giving you a good display. They've been inside, so you can see they've started to get um, some growth on them already. So I need to get them into the ground. You can also see on this one, there is some mold. So that one won't be going in. You don't want to put moldy um, tulips into the ground because they'll just rot away and pass that mold onto others. The 24 in there, 24 in there. And then come spring, once these are flowered, these will be cut back. This will cut, be cut back as well to keep it more compact. And then those tulips will hopefully come up in these planters. I love getting a few seeds in the way. It just makes it feel like it is spring already. Um, so I've got some spinach here on the go. And this is one of my first set of um, herb seeds that I planted the other day. These are actually coriander. You can see they've come up really long and leggy. Um, and which is why I've put them under these lights. Um, so they're inside still. I don't want to put them on the, in the windowsill because then obviously they pull to the light. So by putting them directly underneath this, they'll grow upwards. Yes, they do become a little bit leggy because really, ideally, this needs to be higher. It should really be kind of here, I guess. So they're really, really close. I might try and raise it up today. Um, but on the whole, they're doing well. Some of the other herbs that I planted in that video are also starting to, coming up, to come up, which is really, really good. Um, so I should have loads of herbs. Now you'll see I have got a little bit of mold. It hasn't been a major issue. Um, I'm spraying it every few days with a 1% hydrogen peroxide mix, which is what I use when I grow the microgreens as well, just to keep the mold off. And also mold hates uh, airflow. So I've also got this small fan and I just turn it on not all the time, but during the day. It also helps the seedlings grow nice and sturdy stalks because obviously if they were outside, they would get rustled. And so this is the way they're getting rustled by an artificial wind and it does help them um, kind of become a little bit more sturdy. So I'm gonna leave that on, give that a good airflow across some of this mold and help that disappear. But yeah, it's really, really nice to have seeds growing. Um, and hopefully after this sort of end of January, February snow, we might go into March with semi-mild weather and we can get these out into the garden. Well, look at that. As the snow and the ice has receded, the iris reticulata have begun to appear. So we've got a couple of plants in here where the buds are nearly open. So there's this one here, and then there's this one down here. They're lovely little January, February flowering irises. Um, and then we've got several more. So these are the leaves, and then this, the center, the fleshier center bit, is where your flower comes out from. Um, so these are all gonna be in power. Now these were bought late at the end of last year, and I didn't have any to put them, so they just got shoved into this trough. Ideally, I want to put them into nice little clay pots and make a nice little um, display of them. Um, but for now, they've just been shoved in here, and they'll flower in here, um, and then I'll probably pop them on towards the end of this year when they finish flowering. Um, and in the alpine troughs themselves, they are also starting to come through. Um, so you can see they are starting to come up now here uh, within the alpine troughs themselves. And there are more down here, but they're kind of hidden amongst the plants. They'll, oh, here, well, here's one. You can just see the tips. They're just starting to come up and push their way through. Um, so they'll be really, really pretty when they're all in flower. I have got some more um, that I actually bought, um, but I haven't even planted those bulbs yet, so they probably won't happen this year. I'll plant them and they'll probably just come up, grow some leaves, take some energy down, and then they'll grow next year. But it's really, really nice in February when it's cold and grim to see some little flowers coming through. Well, today is super, super sucky. Uh, it's been a long day at work. Things haven't gone great. And then I've come home and this are, these are the two baby budgies. And here is the cockbird. 
But you will notice there are only three birds here and Sunny should be in the nest box incubating eggs. And in fact, Sunny was dead on the floor. There was absolutely no reason for her to have died. She was in perfect health. She hadn't been overworked with babies. She only had two. Um, the cockbird had been looking after her really well. It hadn't been cold. They're in my spare room, so they're nice and warm. Um, but she was dead. So that is sucks. Really sucks. Um, I know with animals, they, they do just go. But it sucks in particular because obviously last year we bred Sunny and Io died for no reason midway through that clutch. And then this year, she literally was about two and a half weeks through uh, incubating her second clutch. And I don't know what happened, but she came out and she was dead. Um, yeah, so that, that about sums up today. Crap. Uh, so we will just be thankful that we have these two little babies who have done really, really well. These guys are actually going to come out of this cage now with Dad. They're going to go back into the the bigger aviary with the cockatiels and things um, and we will just abandon breeding for the time being uh, and let us sort of catch our breath and uh, find out what's going on. Well it is a beautiful day outside, the, uh, the sky is blue, we had a lovely frost last night um, but I'm just not feeling like doing anything. And I think there are always those days for everyone where you just don't want to do anything. And I, it would be a lie for me to film homesteady stuff, stuff that I'm getting up to, when actually, for, for the, probably the rest of this week, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to feed my animals, look after my animals, and stay inside in the warm and watch tons of TV and go to work and just vegetate. Um, I'm still upset about Sunny. It was, I don't know why she died. She was a lovely little, uh, a lovely little budgie. Work is obviously mega stressful. Um, for the past couple of months, I've not really had, I think I've had one or two double days off. Um, so most of it's been one day off and then back for a few days and then another day off. And that, you know, one day off isn't enough to recover. Um, so, you, you know, you're working 50 hours a week You've only got one day off in between, back to shifts. It's not enough time to do anything. Um, so I'm gonna just take some time off in the next few days, just recover, get my mind and my body back into sync, spend time with my family, um, you know, Saad's stress with work as well. We need to spend some family time together and just relax. Um, spend time with dogs, visit maybe my family or whatever. Um, and just take a short sort of break. Um, you'll have noticed obviously that kind of the videos have gone down to a one, possibly two a week at the moment. And again, that is work. That is the craziness of work. And, and I love, don't get me wrong, I love my job. I really love it. I'm learning so much that's gonna benefit uh, Brimwood Farm in the future. I'm about to lamb, so in two weeks, uh, we're about to start lambing. Um, but then we're gonna be kidding at Easter. We've got bulls going off to the abattoir, we've got uh, cows coming in. Um, so it's good and I'm learning loads and loads of things, um, but it doesn't leave a lot of time. And uh, I think after a year of being there now, um, that lack of time and the lack of availability for me to focus on myself and to focus on the homestead here and to produce videos for you guys, because I love that. I, like, you know, focusing on myself is also producing videos to put onto YouTube to share with you because that's part of focusing on myself. Um, progressing Brimwood Farm, making friends, keeping friends, keeping you guys interested. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to be there, you know, for the next few months, year, etc. Um, but I have got a hell of a lot of time off in March because I needed to take a load of days off. Um, so I think I'm actually working fewer days than I've got days off in March. Uh, and we're going to go up to the farm and do loads of things, plant trees, more restoration stuff. So I'll take loads of videos um, of the stuff we're doing up there. I'll be vlogging there. Uh, we're currently getting the land deeds changed into my name so we can then initiate the, the sort of the planning permission stuff for the house build. 
Um, so there's a lot going on. There's see, Saad's visa is coming out. We need to get that so he can get indefinitely to remain. So we're under that pressure as well. Um, so I think we just need a little bit of time to restock, uh, get our minds and our bodies, as I said, back into sync. So for now, I'm going to say bye bye. Thank you again. Thank you for watching the channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. I love this channel and I love you guys. Um, and I'm very, very appreciative of you coming and watching constantly. Um, so I'm going to just sign off for today and I will be with you again next week for another Small Hunting Diaries. Along the way this uh, blue sky continue. I'm going to sit in the conservatory and keep warm and toasty for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm not down and I'm not out. I just need a brief little break. So I'll see you soon. Bye.